Bonjour à tous. Uh, bon matin. Good morning, uh, everybody. My name is uh, Francis Fourny. I'm uh, director of the uh, Quebec City uh, Lab for FP Innovation, and I'm pleased to uh, introduce you uh, this uh, techni technical session uh, this morning. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, acknowledge our sponsor for this session. It's uh, Banque Nationale. In fact, it's the second year uh, that FP Innovation work with the uh, Montreal Wood Convention to organi organize a technical session. Uh, since we had uh, an important success last year, we decided to uh, repeat the event this, uh, this year. So our moderator will be uh, William Love, Bill for, for the friend. In fact, uh, Bill is, is involved in the wood, uh, wood industry for over 30 years. Uh, is currently uh, Vice President of Technical Development with Tembex Forest Products Group. Uh, and his responsibilities are mainly overseeing capital planning and analysis, uh, project development and execution uh, in close collaboration with the project owners, and also improving manufacturing process and products and technology. Uh, Bill started uh, his career with Farintec Canada Corporation, uh, now FP Innovation, uh, before to join Tembeck in 1993. Uh, Bill is also involved and a, a great supporter to uh, different forest organization. He's participating to many boards and also uh, committees, including Canadian Wood Council, FP Innovations, NLGA, Wood Products Council, Wood Manufacturing Council, and other. Please welcome Bill. Bonjour à tous. So I'm here today pitch hitting because Charles Tardif couldn't make it. <laughs> so I, uh, I uh, resisted Dennis uh, Russo. He asked me before Christmas. I said, really, no. So I'm in charge of capital planning, but we have no money to travel. So I told him, I said, we can't travel. So, so Charles took it, and he had to cancel. So I, um, I got asked again, so I said I'd do it. Uh, before we jump into the presentations, thanks, everybody, for coming. I just want to go over some rules of engagement, basic stuff. So. I'll endeavor, my job will be to keep us on time, but I don't want to limit you know, the question and answer, so we'll try to find a balance between schedule keeping and lively discussion. I'd ask everybody, if you've got a cell phone, just put it on vibrate, and if you have to take a call, just kind of step out of the room <clears throat> so we don't disturb the, the speakers. Um, I think the way we're set up today is we're going to have the questions at the end of the session, so if you can hold your questions till the end of the presentation. We have a coffee, ba a coffee break and a lunch planned for this group. And I think the nearest exit, if we have a problem, is right there. And the washrooms are outside the room. So <clears throat> with that, we'll get started. We'll probably, as some of you guys know from this session, people come in and probably by 9 it'll be full, because I guess they were out last night doing something. <laughs> uh, Frederick Beaulieu is Valley's CEO since 2007. He's on a mission to shape his Quebec-based company into a leading designer, manufacturer of handling solutions. Holder of a Bachelor of Engineering and a Master's of Science in Project Management. His, high <coughs> excuse me, his eye for engineering and his drive for innovation has helped define Valley's trademark brand of customized solutions. His hands-on approach to business keeps him connected to the company's operations, while his ear to the ground keeps him in lockstep with the economic issues affecting the industry serves, like the forestry sector. Welcome, uh, Frederick. Thank you, Bill. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Bill. Um, I'm not so used to that, so I, I have the feeling to look like Steve Jobs, but without a black turtleneck. Anyway, uh, good morning, everybody. I'm very happy to be here with you this morning. Anyone have ever succeeded in upping the price of uh, their lumber because they transported, let's say, uh, one extra kilometer? Have you had clients tell you your lumber is so good because it traveled two extra kilometers? Ever used this sales pitch? I give my lumber the TLC treatment. I only am done 1,000 pounds load at a time, fresh out of the kiln. You all know it doesn't work that way. And it's because handling lumber is not a value added operation customer will pay for good quality at a good price, period. 
our number is handled as no bearing influence on the quality. So if the handling process fails to add value to your lumber, wouldn't it make sense to reduce its cost and impact on your operations? Today I've been asked to present case studies where we manage to improve our client's operation. I've chosen two. The solution I'll be telling you about stem from sensible thinking and applications. They're not rocket science. While drafting this address, it also occurred to me that conversation deserve a broader theme that I should give you a glimpse into what the ending solution of tomorrow will be in our bid for even greater efficiency. So I'll talk about these two examples, which are cases we typically handle. But these cases that are predicated on current method that will form the bedrock for the coming years. I couldn't overlook the importance of letting you in on what lies beyond that. Our first example is straightforward and required solely the desire to change. A company based in Western Canada had a lumber yard whose unusual configuration cramped its storage capacity which made shipping operation a problem. For the yard's irregular shape to work well with the rigid chassis truck being used, more free and open space would have been required. As you can see, just here, you don't have the possibility to store things. And the other point was, we cannot store anything in the center because you didn't have the space that you, you, you need for moving your rigid chassis uh, lift rack. By using a more compact articulated lift truck, a Valley 4825C, we increased the yard storage capacity by 40%. You see, an articulated lift truck can snake its way around and into areas that are harder to access and it's far less expensive than buying an extra lamp. As you can see, we just add this storage area over here, and also we add storage area in the center. Mostly what is amazing with an articulated lift rock, it's very easy to move in very narrow alley. So that's mostly the reason why we were able to add this storage area here, add here, and solve the problem of loading and unloading area. Our second example is uh, more complex and involves a case that we are still examining. This plan spans, spans one kilometer and two identical trucks are used to handle transportation. The truck operators have to drive fast to prevent bottlenecks. This results in safety issue and load spills. The current system is also far from being diesel efficient. The plant runs on three work shifts. The truck's capacity is 30,000 pounds at 24 inches load center meaning they can only transport one load at a time, whether it's green or dry wood. This current, their current equipment can barely handle the job. They need higher capacity and more diesel efficient trucks. Actually, one truck to minimize cost. The higher capacity will also increase safety on the site as fewer trips will mean less congestion and not having to speed. <laughs> this is a beast, eh? 
Our suggestion is the Valley 4DA 50C, whose capacity is 50,000 pounds at 48 inches load center. This truck will make it possible to transport two loads of green lumber instead of one, and four loads of dry lumber instead of one. It would also cut the fleet from two trucks to one. Faster driving at slower speeds and reduce diesel consumptions. Add a packing press and you limit load spills too. Let's, look, let's take a look at the numbers. So mostly what we right now working on is what we saw, it's replacing the 4DA 50C, replacing two vehicles by the 4DA 50C will get a return on investment inside 19 months. Other thing is what we, we see over here is having two loads at the time instead of one, increase the efficiency by 42 percent. But what is more interesting is when we're coming to dry wood, we just increase the load for, from one to four, and that increased the efficiency to 71 percent. Both of these cases are fine examples, but they only scratch the surface. As to the, as to the advancement in handling equipment in store for the future, which is what I'd like to focus on now, because I believe it's important you know what's coming. The future of handling equipment rests on four key trends that will accelerate progress in this area exponentially over the coming decade. Some manufacturers, as Valley, are already embracing these trends with promising and favorable results. As you can see, these four key trends, you got the technology, robotics, self-driving vehicle, and other energy sources. Technology. This is a rich and varied component. But the main facets are data and its assessment. It seems almost everything today generates data. For example, a truck's engine and transmission. There is nothing new there. But what if you combine the data with a load cell that measures the load being transported and a GPS system? All of a sudden, you will have intelligence, handling intelligence, such as how often in a day your trucks are actually hauling loads, how many times they operate fully laden, etc. And as you know, what can be measured can be improved. At last year's Wood Convention, we announced a new initiative called Smart Handling Solution. It's still in the works, and you can rest assured we will tell you once it launches. Today's young generation learn to tap, swipe, and pinch before they could walk. So as the internet, and you know that for sure, as the internet and mobile technology increasingly permit our work environment, we shouldn't be surprised to see trucks operator wielding their tablets in the near future, not only to check their orders and assignments, but also to review the das data mentioned before to measure their progress. They are used to that. They already used apps in their training to measure their progress. So they'll expect to be similarly equipped on the job so they can gauge their output. Robotics. The field of robotics has become increasingly more accessible in recent years because it is less expensive but also programming is a lot simpler. So 
you should prepare for handling equipment capable of performing more complex tax tasks and even performing there autonomously in some cases. We just delivered this week a new claim. For sure, it's not in the wood industry, but it's in the aluminum industry. And the claim that you can operate on a lift truck allow you when there is an anode who just lay down on the floor, just took it and put it back on its feet. Self-driving vehicle. Okay, we have a little video over here. With no sound, please. Yeah, thanks. All right, because the music is kind of boring, you know. Kind of music you got in the elevator, all right? So anyway, it wasn't the Rolling Stone for sure. All right, we already have automated mining vehicle, farm equipment, and cars. Why not fully self-driving in lift trucks? The technology end exists, and the trucks are called AGVs for automated guided vehicles. There are trucks currently being loaded with automated lift trucks, and we are presently working on this jointly with another company. Other energy sources. Electricity will play a more important role in the coming years. This means cleaner air for indoor handling operation and fewer emissions being released into the overall atmosphere. Batteries are increasingly more accessible and the lifting capacity of electric lift trucks is greater than before and will continue to rise. There is no turning back, turning back from this growing trend. We want to lower our lift truck diesel consumption and environmental footprint. These four trends will define handling in the coming years and they are already afoot. We are already seeing results that point to significant reductions in handling costs. For in instance, AGVs often yield a return on investment in two, in two, two years. We are currently working with clients on rendering their handling operation more efficient. Businesses often focus on boosting the efficiency of value-added operations at the detriment of their non-value-added counterparts. And this is despite the fact that improving and linked solution require modest investments, especially when compared to the funds improving your manufacturing process that will come in. So why not hurry and reduce the cost of your handling operation and then invest what you save on your value-added operations. Thank you, everybody. Now I'm free for some question. And if everybody wants to discuss more about the subject that I already talked, well, I will be at the booth 36, and it will be a pleasure for me to chat more about that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Maybe it's because it's early in the morning, so people are kind of shy. Eh? Yeah, have, have All right, Bill. <laughs> so very interesting. Yes, one of my questions would be, do you provide like a full service in terms of financing and uh, maintenance packages? Yeah, we, we could. We have a partner for finance, for sure. And we, we got already the, fi the, the maintenance field, so this is not a problem for us. I know that right now... Um, company are more focused on their first thing that they have to do and for sure handling is not part of their mission and that's our case so we are we are able to i would say to give some solution uh, on that way thank you all right any other questions for for frederick come on you guys don't be shy <laughs> 
Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bill. Okay.